So I've always been told to open my videos with an attention grabbing bit of footage. So this is what I've got for this video. And you ask yourself, what the? Why? All right. <laughs> Let me explain this. This tree had almost completely died, but it still had a lot of moisture in it. And this was kind of a personal test for me. I was wondering how much could I cut and still keep it together. Um, I did need the top of the tree's weight to be able to pull it over. And I stopped just short of breaking, but I left enough strength in there where, well, as you can see, it's still pretty strong. So, good morning. I wake up to this view every day and it, it's different every single day. And down underneath that cloud base are millions of people. And sadly, so few of those millions of people have a clue about their trees. They couldn't tell you the difference between a fir tree and a spruce tree or a redwood or a pine. And I'm just appalled by the lack of caring that most people have. And this is where I live. Look at this. Everywhere you look, there are trees. And most of these people, you know, they don't know what they've got. They don't even see their trees. You know, they say, oh yeah, that's pretty. Or, oh yeah, I like the shade. Or more often, I, I just get, oh yeah, I hate the mess. Or, oh, that's an ugly tree. But look at this. This, is, this whole area, it is what it is because of the trees. So I'm up in the air in the bucket truck and I'm looking around the neighborhood and I, lo and behold, I see all kinds of tree issues. That tree was topped severely and the new growth comes out as these long straight shoots, which permanently alters the way the tree develops. Instead of having a natural branch formation, it now becomes pockets of decay and long lengthy branches. And then again, I saw this There's a DNR cedar. Somebody decided that it was too tall. They took the top out of the tree and it permanently changed the way the tree will grow. Now the branches will become long and gangly and heavy and start breaking. And then we've got this. On the good ship, yep. The good ship lollipop in trees. I don't understand this. Some people have an issue with trees getting too large and they have to control them. So let's get on to today's job. Actually, it was a couple of days ago, but this was a two-day job, and it's a huge Quercus lobata, valley oak, a very common tree in our area and one of the oldest living trees down in the valley. This particular tree's got a lot of history. So if we go back in time, the owner showed me some pictures. He's got them up on the wall, and that's the tree. This is from 1955. I'm not sure what this picture was taken, but it shows all those little cottages which have been there for a long, long time. That's across the street, and that house is still there. And look at those cars. I, I have no idea how old those pictures are, but interesting. So this is an ancient tree, very likely over 150 years old. It's been here long before we were. And unfortunately, about 15 years ago, the people next door developed and the city did not enforce the ordinance that protects the root system. So they put in a big foundation for this big building and they tore up the whole area and I've been watching this tree go downhill for the last 15 years, slowly, but every year it's got a little bit more dead. And our job is to go up in the tree and take out just the dead. I'm trying to salvage every bit of life that's up here, but it is declining. I would say that this tree probably only has about 20 to 25 percent of the foliage that a normal tree of this size would have. So what can you do about it? Well, I can't water the area where there's now a building and the whole area has been compromised. So it just becomes a matter of, of routine safety getting the dead branches out of the tree so that they don't fall on people. Some of these limbs were quite significant. I, I took out some limbs that were uh, 10 inches in diameter that were completely dead. And you can see that the environment has a lot of uh, pedestrian traffic and cars. So all of these obstacles up here that just shed easily, 
that's another thing about this tree when the dead wood dries out it just breaks off and falls and some of it's quite heavy so I'm up in the bucket for part of the job Jorge got in the middle of the tree where I couldn't reach and we spent two days primarily with with a pole saw uh, some of the stuff that I could reach with a chainsaw was was good I did get out of the bucket a few times and work my way around we were able to get to both sides this is cool look at this old cable it's completely enveloped the homeowner believes that this is about 70 years old so there was not a thimble on here and this is a an old style hand wrapped um, common seven strand cable which was was the way that cables were done for the longest time so there's a number of cables up in the tree and some of them are quite tight some of them are quite loose um, how important are they well I don't know but what I do know is a long time ago selling cable jobs was a viable profit margin for a lot of tree companies so I frequently find cables in trees and I have to ask myself I don't see a purpose I don't see a reason I know a lot of people say, well, we don't see cables very often. You know, in our area, there was a, a lot of big companies. See, these are some big, completely, almost completely dead branches. There's a little tiny bit of life on that one. But it, will that little tiny bit of life survive? Uh, I don't think so. You know, there's hardly anything left to it. So I took that whole piece out of there. You know, it was a sad job for me because I remember working on this tree before the neighbors destroyed the root system and it was full and lush and and just a magnificent tree there are other trees on the property you can see in the background there uh, there's another tree down there that is nice and full and lush there's some more over on that side and they've been living in this environment for you know most of their life oh look at that a lot of woodpecker holes that's uh a limb that was just ready to shear off. I like to find the acorns in the woodpecker holes. Now if this tree was out in the open it wouldn't be so important but you can see people walk underneath these little bombs. <laughs> here's, a, here's a cable that is redundant now but that tells you something. It tells you that at one time this branch was quite a bit heavier and it was needed because they wouldn't put in a cable that's slack like that. Yeah, every once in a while I screw up. That's a handsaw bang to the knuckle. Yeah, I figure a day without blood means you're not really working in trees. <laughs> I bleed daily. Anyway, the tops of a lot of these branches were really in bad shape, so I had to make a lot of tree decisions. If I saw a limb that was so pocked, even if it had some green on it, it's quite evident that that branch is not going to survive for much longer. So, we carried on, and this is uh, end of day one. And I wanted to show you some of the foliage. It's, it's really a, a pretty tree. It's one of my, my favorite trees. Unfortunately, the tree was full of ants, and I was getting bit constantly. Oh my gosh, these ants are so aggressive. They're the, they're the little tiny ants. This is interesting. The neighbor, this is the tree over on the neighbor's side. I was able to do some work from there but he was quite concerned about this branch over his building and it just so happens to be that's the best foliage on the whole tree all right day two well after uh, doing some work on the other side I uh, decided to help Jorge out he didn't want to have to climb back up there so we put him up here in the bucket it looks dangerous but he is tied in he threw his rope you want me to manage and the then rope? I brought the bucket down Jorge's really, really good with the pole saw and getting out to the ends of a lot of these branches was not only physically demanding, but some of these branches were just so long, you know, there was nothing to tie into to get out there. Okay. You know, I, I would have needed a 90-foot bucket to get up to the tops of all these things. And I don't have a 90-foot bucket, but, you know, we, we seem to get by and... You know, a lot of our jobs are in backyards. I'm showing you this because uh, a couple of reasons. One, I've got a new phone. I've got the iPhone 13, and it has a tremendous zoom, 
as well as a tremendous wide angle as you can see and the clarity of the imagery I think you're gonna like this so <laughs> you can see how the potential for liability of somebody getting hurt is very real Jorge was way way up there he is tied in in a couple of places he actually had two ropes up there which simplified some of his working he was able to triangulate between the ropes you know one problem that we've got maybe some of you guys have answers for this is you know sometimes we'll we'll cook we'll hook a strap to the end of the the pole saw and hook it to a branch but unfortunately a lot of times Jorge just uses the hook on the pole saw he's moving so often and whenever that happens I'm very leery of it getting bumped off and come falling down you know for two reasons for damaging the pole saw but also having this you know razor sharp saw come flying down to cut my carotid artery or you know hurt somebody <laughs> that's a you know that's a concern it's a dangerous business that we've got here and everything and anything can happen so I want you to pay attention to this tree on the left because that's the same species I'm going to show it a little bit further on but if you see how full the foliage is on the tree on the left and look at the tree on the right there is a significant difference the tree on the left is what the tree on the right looked like 10 years ago it was that full and so you can see the loss in foliage when we're all done with this tree it'll end up looking fairly attractive it's getting better and better as you can see but at the end of the job um, it's it's going to be you know touch and go how long this tree is going to survive working with the pole saw in the tree is physically demanding it's very hard important to have a really sharp pole saw without any debris on the edges of the blade and we use it a lot that's kind of a cool shot shows you the advantages of that new camera hope you guys appreciate the uh, new quality of imagery that we're gonna say oh we had people coming and going this guy just walked out from underneath okay. us it was a surprise so one of the things we got to be very wary of is what I call rollers and when you have a lot of people walking in an area while you're working you have to be very very cognizant and recognize that these little tiny branches can cause people to twist their ankles and slip so I'm constantly keeping up on all this stuff sometimes I get the blower out and just keep the the walking okay. area there's the tree at the end of the job and we've got most of the dead wood out it doesn't look too bad but it's on its way out thanks for watching I appreciate you taking the time and please subscribe to my channel hit the like button you know the routine it helps